Hey everybody and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program RP0. Uh, we've got about a 200 day lull in our uh, activities in deep space so I figured it was probably time to uh, get some things built for our next Mars window. So I built this um, very briefly. I don't know. I lost some of the footage but uh, this is basically a new uh, habitat slash lab for our Mars station employing the uh, Skylab module. Um, Altogether, it's got uh, quite a bit of life support. I think it came out to be something like uh, two years of life support on its own for a crew of three people. It's got these expandable arms that house uh, solar panels to replace the one that got broken. Boris. And uh, I can upgrade some of these thrusters now because uh, in the time since I've built it and since when I'm doing this going to attach it to a rocket uh, I got an upgrade for the thrusters which I think are now at like level 5 yeah so we need to get this thing onto a rocket which I have not yet put into a sub assembly so we're going to uh, load up what I am tentatively calling the RAX uh, you remember this this is our big uh, 500 ton to uh, orbit lifter and we'll just uh, drop this down a little bit. And yeah, it's still doing that weird thing with the fairing. It's so odd. Anyway, so uh, we need to designate this as a sub-assembly. There we go. I'll uh, go ahead and key in a name here, just R-A-X, and then try to think of a designation for the upper stage. Uh, not having a whole lot of look. Anyway, a very brief description uh, about its... Uh, engines because we will have the RD-170 available to us uh, which means this thing's gonna get an upgrade probably uh, right after it's made in flight. I want to test it with the E-1 clusters before we uh, upgrade those liquid boosters to a new engine but yeah uh, you know we'll get there. I want to make sure it works well like this first before I start messing with things and of course there's something terribly wrong so we're just going to uh, reload. Yeah, this uh, this tends to happen a lot, especially when you play RP0. You just kind of get used to all things just being a little wonky. Anyway, we'll go pull out our sub-assembly again, get it mounted. There's the weird problem with the fairings again. Anyway, so we'll start off and... Uh, put a couple of struts on here make sure that uh, we mitigate some of these wobbles that we are seeing in our test flight make sure our, our payload fairings deploy in an appropriate time take the very quick step which is basically just a right click on the fairing base and then suddenly everything's fine and then we'll try to just uh, raise it up to an appropriate level which means sticking it through the roof this rocket is too tall for anything that was actually intended to be kerbled and just a, uh, a few more struts on some of our boosters. All the fuels are looking good, so we'll just uh, go ahead and slap this on the build list. 446,000 uh, monies later, and we'll go build something else. So, um, we're probably going to need to re-up the supplies at the Mars station. Uh, before we get our next crew in rotation headed out there. Uh, so I figured, hey, since we've got this ridiculous launch vehicle, we can just send everything all in one boat. Instead of needing two pods, one for life support and one for fuel to give them a top off, we'll just try to do it all in one fell swoop, since we can literally double our tonnage uh, that we can ship to Mars. The uh, DN-5B, I think, at the very, very top end was something like 55 tons to Mars. Uh, Somewhere right around 50 was a little more tolerable because I tend to screw things up. But uh, now that we can very gracefully ship uh, probably about 115, 120 tons to Mars, uh, why not combine these two pods together, make just one ginormous one, and see uh, how well I know it's going to work out better for us because it's less rendezvousing and docking that I have to do and will give us longer overall mission endurance especially now since they're going to have a much bigger space to move around in uh, once they are on station uh, we do of course have more landings planned in the future so there's a lot of just balancing out resources here and see we're already above our 150 ton limit on this thing so we're gonna just try to size it down a bit 
and double check and just kind of uh, reconfigure our life support. And that is, of course, very important. It's hard to determine which is more important between life support and fuel. I mean, you can stay on station as long as you got life support, but you can't come home without fuel. So, you know, do you want infinite re resupply trips or do you want a quick and easy voyage home? Which would be great because our current crew has been out there for, uh, God, like three and a half years almost, maybe a little longer, I, maybe four years. So uh, I'm sure they're really, really eager to come home and regain some of that muscle mass and bone density that they've just been kind of wasting away there in microgravity. So we'll just uh, get our supplies figured out and get all of our levels balanced and uh, acquire appropriate tonnage. All right, and just to make sure this thing can get uh, on station, we're probably going to need comms. We're going to need some means of generating power. Uh, I've been doing these with RTGs, but four RTGs uh, is not quite enough to power that core, resulting in some draw. So uh, we're going to go with um, real big solar panels on this one in hopefully a uh, much bigger battery capacity. Uh, it's simpler, it's a little cheaper, although it is also a little heavier. But we are dealing with an uh, engine that produces a lot more thrust. Uh, the previous versions of this were using an AJ-10. We're using the uh, Apollo service engine, uh, which is like a little more than double the thrust. Anyway, two uh, long-range comms, two short-range comms, just to make sure we can have independent connection with it uh, anywhere at Mars, and just a little bit of tweaking more with the levels. We'll get the heat shield back on it and tucked appropriately to make sure that it will not separate correctly and we'll have to use time warp to uh, get it clear, just like last time. It would be totally worth it. Anyway, uh, Hopefully RCS Balancer will uh, do me some favors on this one. We'll go ahead and get our core stage reattached, get our fairings slapped back on, move this thing up to a launchable height, which of course, uh, bury it through the ceiling. Oh, not quite, a little bit more. There we go. All right, and uh, add it to the build list. So that's gonna do it for this episode, everybody. Thank you so much for hanging out. Sorry it was such a short one, but uh, I do appreciate you stopping by. So anyway, until next time, I'll see you later.